In this video, we're going to take a look at one of the dangers if you're nesting calculate functions in DAX. On my canvas, I've got a single card showing the outstanding balance of all of my customers. Let's take a quick look at the formula. I've called it outstanding measure. And the formula is this. It's the sum of all the outstanding amounts from my transactions table. That's the core expression. And then I've added four filter conditions to it because I want this value to represent all customers and all transactions. So I've said all customer and all transactions. So it ignores any filter context that is on the customer or the transaction table. And then it applies a new filter context to the transactions table. One where the transaction is receivable and the other where the transaction is outstanding. And is receivable basically means it's a sales invoice, sales discount or sales credit and is outstanding means that it has an outstanding balance on it. So what this formula will do is it will calculate the total outstanding amount for all of my customers across all transactions. And that delivers us a single result number of 237,000. The next thing I wanted to do was have a similar calculation for the overdue amount for my customers. And I've done that already. So I have my overdue measure is actually exactly the same as my outstanding measure all the way down to here. And then I've just added one extra filter condition where I've said transaction is overdue, which, which is just a binary flag as to whether or not the transaction is overdue or not. So let's take a look at that. If we add in a new card visual, we add in our overdue measure. We can see that it's a smaller amount as we would expect actually, or we would hope. <laughs> and we have an overdue amount across all our customers, all our transactions of 104,000 pounds. But then I thought, well, hang on a minute. Maybe this is not the best way to write my DAX because what I've got is I've effectively got the outstanding measure, which I've already created. And I've just got one additional filter condition that, that I've added to it. So why don't I just do calculate and for the expression, put in the outstanding measure that I've already got and then just add in this ad additional is overdue condition. So let's take a look at the effect of doing that. As I said, our overdue measure is exactly the same as our outstanding measure. It just has the additional condition of is overdue as one of the filters. So I thought, well, let's save some code and let's write overdue nested calculate. Let's calculate outstanding measure and just, just add this condition of transaction is overdue. I call it a nested calculate because our outstanding measure itself uses calculate within it. So we've got calculate, calculate if we wanted to write out the thing in full. So let's take a look at that as a visualization. If we add a card onto the canvas and we display our value for the overdue nested calculate, we see something very interesting. Um, we see that it actually gives us a different result to our overdue measure. And the reason for that is down to the evaluation sequence uh, within Calculate. Because what we have with our overdue nested calculate is uh, within the calculate function, the filters are evaluated first and then applied to the expression. So our filter in this expression is just the transaction is overdue. And then we're applying that filter to modify the filter context of this expression. Now, if we look at the outstanding measure expression, we've got the transaction is overdue condition being passed to this expression. And then within this expression, we've got calculate. So it's, a, it's evaluating the filters for this expression first. And it's looking at this all customer and all transaction conditions. And because this is executing second after our outer measure, as it were, this is undoing the effect of our condition is overdue. Undoing the condition that we saw if I go back to our overdue nested cut. So, so ignoring that condition, because all transaction means ignore any pre-existing filter context. And then it's applying a new filter context to the transaction table, which is, is receivable, is, is outstanding. So in other words, by nesting these two together and by using this all function, what I've done is I've effectively overridden the is overdue filter I had within this overdue nested calculate function. And that's only there because of this all function. Now, if I weren't wanting to create a, a function to calculate this across all my transactions, all my all my customers, if I removed that condition, the all transaction from my uh, outstanding measure, and what we see now is that our nested calculate 
function is working okay and turning in the result that we expected. So it's just a, an important point to make. There's nothing wrong, absolutely nothing wrong with nesting, calculate, within calculate, within calculate, and so on. But just be aware that if one calculate function is modifying the filter context, the conflicts with or overrides the filter context defined by another calculate function, then you may end up with some results that you don't expect.